It's time for your weekly dose of movie news. Here's Todd Vandenberg, Lee Val, and Rob Steele. Welcome to Cinema Savants. And coming up in this week's show, James Mangold figures it out, Doctor Who leaked a bit, and Keanu Reeves has to explain the new John Wick title. But first, I'd like to remind you to like the show on Facebook and subscribe on iTunes or the Google Play Store or YouTube. Yeah, that's right, YouTube. There's a version. And visit the website, cinemasavants.com, where you'll find out about the splitting of the show. That's right, we are now Cinema Savants News and Cinema Savants Reviews. The names may change later. But if you're subscribed, you'll always be able to get it on Sunday and our second show, which is probably going to be on Thursday. Maybe. If you subscribe, it'll just pop up and you'll not have to worry about it. Meanwhile, let's get into the actual news. Uh, Judd Apatow says he's never going to work in TV again, and I don't care, so moving on. Um... Or do we? Are we supposed to care about that? I don't care. Would they work in TV? Yeah. What did he do in TV? I don't know. I just saw a thing that says he's never going to work in TV again. I said I didn't know he worked in TV in the first place. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, gotcha. Well, yeah. I mean, in that case, I. I in that case, <laughs> I've been censored. In that case, I really don't care because I don't even know what he did in TV. Now I'm gonna have to look it up. Yeah, that's gonna be one of those things. And bear with us, for Todd is having connectivity issues. And, I just uh, thought I just thought what I was saying was just uh, defeating or something. I thought I, I thought I was like Pac Man. I'd been eaten. You know, I was was, saying something. And you you ate like multiple a... dots all at the same time. And <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Tinkerbell like... wandered by and went, "No, enough of you! Ding. <laughs> How dare you diss Judd Apatow on in live slash recorded radio podcast? I, I guess I don't know." Uh, Judd, moving Judd on. Apatow actually censored me on that one. I'm sorry. Oh, Judd. that's what it was. He's he's very very powerful. He's he's going to be getting into podcasts instead of doing TV. Oh, I'm not allowed to say the word podcast anymore. I get it. Fine. Um, James Mangold, which sounds does that not sound like a porn star? <laughs> Just a little bit. It should be. It should be a it, porn. It star. should be. Anyway, James Mangold, the filmmaker who gave us Logan. Which was a good movie, and it would have been even better if they had bothered to read any of the X-Men books before they made it. Um, he's, he has a problem with toxic fandom, <laughs> which is a term that I've been seeing a lot of lately. It's talking about people who get really upset when you've got an established franchise like the X-Men or Star Wars or you know other stuff that has a story before you make the movie and then people get upset when you make the movie and it's nothing like the source material <laughs> and somehow that became toxic i it's toxic because you screwed it up exactly yeah my, um, my, my name is james uh, manaluma but ah, uh, but ah. um yeah yeah i mean that, it really comes down to it, whether you use the source material or not kind of you know like we were talking about solo uh, yeah. a few weeks ago you know, it's it's more like you could use that. Well, I mean, it's not necessarily source material. It's more like intermittent material because they made the movies and they wrote the books and then they have the character. But if you at least use some of the ideas from those books that were in between instead of kind of going off script completely. Um, but if you'd made the movie good, it doesn't really matter if you make the source. The source material is still going to be there either way. But well, yeah, actually, I mean, there's for, a for, for Solo, thing. they dis- disavowed the, they did. The, all the novels and everything, which – that's true, but there's a toxicity because of the fact that if you make a product that's not any good, people who like the franchise, like you said, are not going to like what you made. It has nothing to do – I mean, make something good and there probably won't be that toxicity. Well, yeah, um, and Mangold had a quote this week, which I, I don't really entirely understand it. Uh, he said – let's see, what is it? If Pointing out – that if fans regularly lash out in hysterical and almost biblically spiteful ways over creative <laughs> decisions they don't agree with, then one specific result is inevitable. Strong creative talent will simply get out of the studio business altogether and go elsewhere. Good. That's what we want them to do because they don't know what they're doing. It's like biblical. I like how, how he threw that out there. Biblical. That's probably better than anything and then what he made, actually. Well, I mean, that, that actually, right it, it makes sense that 
actually, I think even using biblical, because some people look at, you know, like the X-Men books. That's what they should be. That is the source material. Because if you make the Bible and all of a sudden he's from Mars <laughs> well, and has three arms and five eyes and heals people with a tricorder or you know whatever, well, this is they're going to get film. upset. Yeah, this has nothing to do with Israel. It's all it's all based on India. That's what you just described. In, I thought it was Iowa. Anyway, <laughs> he's got to no, be that, white. That damn it! Never. Jesus was a white man. No, he, <laughs> no. Anyway, um, wow. How to get off topic. Um, no. Anyway, yeah, th- that, that's the point. You, you make it like the source material, or you do what, uh, what was it, iRobot did, where they didn't even say based on the Isaac Asimov book. It was inspired by, and you kind of go, oh, you screwed <laughs> it up that much. <laughs> wow. Yeah, where the people of the original source got so upset that they, uh, uh, you know, may have offered to sue you because your your what your product was was horrible, so bad that they didn't want to be attached to it in any way. Well, actually, speaking of lawsuits, uh, this came up when I was having a discussion this week with a friend of mine while we're watching the fireworks on the Fourth of July and uh, Battle First, the first came of up. July, right? You celebrate of, Canada Day. Oh yeah, sorry. Um. But Battletech came up with the uh, role-playing game with the big robots. And I thought, why you know, why hasn't there been a movie for that? There seems like there should be a market, and it would have to be better than Pacific Rim. Um, or, or Atlantic Rim. Or Atl- especially Atlantic Rim. And then I remembered there was a lawsuit between the Battletech people and the Robotech people, who also did a big walking, transforming robot mecha thing. Um, but they did it first, but Battletech did it first in America. And I'm thinking, you know what? Both of you just team up, make a movie and split it. Or apparently that's too easy. (laughs) The next day it was announced that legendary pictures and sunrise company are co-producing a live action Gundam movie. And I'm like, now hang on a minute. I know Gundam is a third string Robotech that, uh, Come on. If Battletech and Robotech can't make a movie because they're suing the crap out of each other, how does Gundam sneak in and do essentially the same thing that the other two would be doing? I get that not. <laughs> Is Gumby going to be in it? That's all I want. Oh, wait. Look, there's a Todd sighting. Um, I don't know. It, I, I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense to me. Do you guys have any thoughts? Questions, answers, I don't know. Questions, answers, support. Um, no. But I agree with you. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Um, I want live action other... make Ross. See, I'd like that, but it's not going to happen. Uh-huh. Um, let's see, another thing we had this week. Netflix is considering adding a fourth tier to their pricing program called premium which would be 13.99 a month and contain ultra high definition 4k streams i don't even have a 4k tv yet do we do either of you no i don't i I mean 4k is obviously a big thing out there i mean i can buy movies at the store now for 4k but i'm like well i I can't use it and and i i'm not i don't plan on purchasing a 4k tv anytime soon and i'm not sure uh, you know, if my computer could stream 4K or anything no, like that. No, it can't. Yeah. I'll tell you now. Nope. <laughs> Appreciate the information, at least. So. I'll, I'll throw you off a bit by telling you Samsung is even making an 8K TV. I was going to say they're they're headed to the next thing, your next round of technology. So, yeah, I'm not going to spend 600 on a 4K. And then four years from now, oh, now I have to get the 8K. Which, you know, no. I'm still no, watching movies on my microwave, so, you know, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, on to actual movie news this time. Jeremy Renner, who uh, is in everything this day and should change his name to Chris. Uh, <laughs> he's apparently going to be in the new Spawn movie. And this has thrown me off because they announced that Jamie Foxx was playing Spawn. Right. And Jeremy Renner is apparently playing the character Twitch or Detective Twitch Williams, whatever you want to call it. He was, oh, cool. I never heard the full name. But apparently, it's a Twitch movie with Spawn in the background. 
Oh, right. You mean, you mean the guy from So You Think You Can Dance? Is that what you're talking about? They're making a movie based on that? <laughs> I didn't even know that was a thing, but as soon as you said So You Think You Can Dance, no, I don't, and <laughs> please, no, it, it's not. Yeah, this, um, is, this, this is the weird thing to me about the Spawn movie. Everyone was excited. Oh, Todd McFarlane's involved, and Todd McFarlane's writing it, and then the news comes out that, well, Spawn's not really going to have any lines, and he's just kind of this... He's more than a background character, but it, it's his story, but it's not told from his perspective. And it's like, right. why are you going to do this movie then? It, it's it doesn't an even sound like a idea, movie. But really? Kind of. Yeah, I, I am not really sure. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they're, you may have already gotten to it, but I'm sure at some point they're going to do a Batman movie told for, through the eyes of Alfred. It's like, nah, I don't really Which need I that. Would see. You I'll know what? We'll that. get to that in a minute, actually. Oh, okay. So just, just stay don't. tuned. We've got about seven stories to get through because they're all Marvel now. It's actually, it's actually told through the eyes of Wilfred the dog. So <laughs> the dog's name was Ace. Thank you. I would watch that. I would watch that. There it's actually Ace? even was a bat cow at one point, but Ace the bat dog. The sixties were awesome. <laughs> well, speaking of the sixties, and this is actually. Uh, uh, sad news, really. <clears throat> sad yes. news, really. Excuse me. Uh, Steve Ditko, who helped create Spider-Man and Doctor Strange and a lot of iconic Marvel characters, died this week. Uh, had a heart attack. Um, I guess it was about a week ago, and died, which is very sad. It is. Sad. But it moves us into the Spider-Man stories, right? Right. Because. There's set picks that came out from the new Spider-Man movie, and I don't care about that, but that is actually also in the same article as the extended Avengers movie, your extended Infinity War, that's supposed to add about 30 minutes of material, uh, mostly uh, Thanos' backstory to the DVD that's coming out in August, I believe it is. Don't they already have an Avengers extended version that comes out next year called an actual movie? Well, that too. <laughs> they do. It's, um, it does extend well, yeah, the story somewhat. Part two, although there's a cinematographer named Trent Opalock. I didn't name him. I'm probably even mispronouncing <laughs> it. But he put on his CV, because he's looking for new work, since he's apparently not going to be working for Marvel anymore. On his CV, he put, yes, I worked on this movie called Avengers 4 Endgame. And everyone went, <clears throat> is that the title? Is that the title? And Kevin <laughs> Kevin Feige kind of went, yes, yes, fine, damn it. So apparently it's got a title now. Endgame. Okay. It kind of goes with everything else, I suppose. Mm. No word yet on whether Trent Opalock... Trent Opalock sounds like a Pokemon. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> No word really yet on uh, James Manbold, though. That's, that's, we we got some odd names in this episode. Yes, we do. <laughs> um, uh, moving on to another guy named Simon Kinsberg, who is doing the X Men Dark Phoenix storyline badly. <laughs> I, I'm telling you right now, he's t- doing it badly. Uh, it's already been pushed back to next year again. Because uh, this was supposed to come, wasn't it supposed to come out last November? Then it got pushed up to this November, and now it's February of next year. It's not going well. That's a hint. Just stop. But <laughs> he said this one is going to be very different from the other X Men movies because it is good. Char- no, 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 not good. That was not the word used. Character driven. Mm. What movies are not driven by a character? Well, <laughs> I, I mean, think it's not like DC movies. But... Ouch! Uh, That's yeah, painful. I can see. I can see his point where it's more character driven rather than just plot device, plot device, plot device. But yeah, what he should have what he should have said is since I keep pushing it back, he should have said this is the X Men version of Don Quixote. That's what he should have said. <laughs> Well, it's all the lawsuits that's keeping it from coming out. And what they should do is just shelve it until Marvel has rights again and then let, it, let us have a good X-Men movie. I mean, there were some good sure. X-Men movies, but there have been just a rash. There were some good movies with X-Men in the title. 
Well, point taken. Um, Good way to put it. Moving on to the to, to the DC universe now, though. Uh, announced three movies are going to start filming soon. The Batman. It's finally starting to film the Pennyworth TV series. See, Batman from the Alfred perspective. And the uh, Joaquin Andujar, uh, Joaquin Phoenix version <laughs> of the Joker. Joaquin Andujar would be awesome as the Joker. Oh, my God. I think that would work. Actually, Andujar is Batman. John Tudor is actually the Joker in that series. So. <laughs> <laughs> John Tudor. Um. And the reference was caught quickly. I loved it. Really, see more um, John Tudor as, as the Riddler, though. Anyway, <laughs> I was thinking Mad Hatter myself, but uh, one Whitey. thing I liked about Whitey the Walking Penguin. Whitey plays. I'm sorry, but Whitey has to be the Penguin. Okay. Anyway, back to Walking. Actually, Whitey. Yeah. Uh, oh my God. The Walking Phoenix version apparently is going to have Robert De Niro in it, and they haven't said who he is yet. Alfred. What I'm thinking, and I would, even if this doesn't sound like a cool idea, have, you know, Joaquin plays the Joker up until he becomes the Joker, et cetera, et cetera. Have Robert De Niro narrate it as, you know, the Joker in the future, and here's how my story happened. Would that work? I think that would work. And who the hell is using a saw? What is that? <laughs> Todd. <laughs> Not me. So Todd, Todd, are you making a cabinet? He's, what is he's still trying to get those kids out of that Thai cave, I think. I think that's what he's doing. He's digging his way down. The wow. sub didn't show up in time. You gotta do something. Ah. Anyway, so De Niro is a narrator? Good idea, bad idea? No, uh, yeah, De Niro is a narrator of anything is a yeah. good idea. Yeah, that's a great idea if I would actually cared about the movie. Ooh, ooh, there's a hint. <laughs> I mean, um, Joaquin Phoenix, that's that's awesome Robert De Niro that's awesome but I don't really I would like to see a good Batman movie again maybe one that actually is tied into the universe they set up instead of rebooting it again but he's still somehow within the universe it's like oh my god he's rebooting inside out of the unit in, inside out we actually get to see the little cartoon voices inside Batman's head and one of them <laughs> is going to be voiced by Lewis Black <laughs> and another one by Chris Rock just, be, just because oh. uh, it'll make things weird yeah. Speaking of comics, there's and uh, sci-fi TV series called Firefly. You remember Firefly? I remember Firefly. The, uh, Joss Whedon show, right? Yeah. The, I mean, they, okay, they called Star Trek the wagon train to the stars because they wanted it to be kind of a western only set in space. I'm sorry, Firefly was a western in space. <laughs> anyway, they've been trying to get a new new TV series out of it for. What has it been, 15, 20 years since the show was on? Yeah, something um, like that, definitely, yeah. And it's still not going to happen. But there's going to be a graphic novel coming uh, talking about how Zoe and Mal met each other. I'm not even sure I remember who Zoe and Mal... I know Mal, but that's not the point. Um, God, it's been a while since I've seen this, but it's coming. So Firefly Flan... Fire, 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 fly fans? Fire, flan, fly, fire, yeah, fire those flame, people. Fly, Firefly Okay, so we can get a Pennyworth TV series, but we can't get a Firefly. No. <laughs> Makes sense. Unless Firefly is the bad guy in the Batman movie. Um, there you go. God, who would play him? Daryl Porter. There we go. Along with <laughs> along with Killer Moth. Firefly is a new buddy. <laughs> How many Cardinal references are we going to make in the show? <laughs> anyway, uh, moving over to the BBC, where they're going to court over something that I do not understand. Uh, there was a leak of some new Doctor Who footage, except it's not new Doctor Who footage. Everything I have read says someone put the last minute of the last Christmas special online where Peter Capaldi's Doctor regenerated into Jodie Whittaker's Doctor, and now that's online. Forrest Whittaker is a Doctor Forrest Whittaker is a Doctor not Who. Forrest that's Whittaker. awesome. That would be awesome. I remember when Jody. he played Keith Hernandez in that documentary of the 79 year when he batted 344. Jody Whitaker. <laughs> I've lost the, lost the show. There's so many 
errors and wild pitches. Um, she went baseball. He went like it was like uh, Ben Stiller in, in Tropic Thunder with the like you went full retard. It's like you went full baseball. So now it's just going to be Cardinals references for the rest of the show. There we go. You, you did go full baseball. And it is your fault. It is my fault. Damn you, Joaquin Andujar. All right. So they're suing because someone leaked something that is already out anyway. I don't. I don't get that, but if you want to look up the new new footage, apparently it's out there somewhere. Uh, you will not be looking up the new Lost in Space season because they just started filming and it's not going to come out until late next year. Look, we've got a date. That's nice. Um, let's see, trailer news this week. Todd, heard you saw a new Mission Impossible trailer, which leaves... I think you said there was, what, now 12 minutes of unreleased footage? Yeah, that's my guess. That there must be about 12 minutes left in the movie for people to see. Uh, the trailer looked exciting, which, you know, it should. It's a Mission Impossible movie. It, it's, Hello? Yeah. It, I'm looking forward to the movie, despite the fact that I feel like I've seen 90% of it already. Um, but, man, the, like like we have all said, and especially you, Lee, like the fatigue is really setting in on this thing because, man, they're, they're going to have to make $800 million just to pay for the promotional budget. I mean... It's just constant. It's unbelievable. It looks really cool, but man, the life. It's like, can we please just have one movie? I mean, I, at this point, I think I might go see The Sorrow and the Pity in an art house, and they'll have a trailer for Mission Impossible before it. I mean, it's <laughs> gotten, gotten kind of insane. Yeah, I got it. And I'm definitely catching on what you're putting down, like a young Ted Simmons. But um, I had a question. Did you see this trailer prior to Ant Man? And Wasp yeah. Girl? Yes. Okay. Yes. Because I'm, yeah. I'm going to see that today. So I'm actually, as sad as this sounds, because I've seen so much of the same trailer, I'm actually interested in seeing the new, newish trailer. Just it is. There, there, there are some interesting little tweaks here and there. So I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. I can see that. That's, that's nice. Although the, the best part of the trailer is <laughs> Simon Pegg like, introduces it. And not literally in the theater, because that would have been really cool. But <clears throat> some kid who is there for Ant-Man and the Wasp, go figure. He says, look, it's James Bond. <laughs> what? Wow. <laughs> like, okay. So anyone with a British accent is James Bond to this child, which that's awesome. So. That's, yeah, it's funny. <laughs> it would have been funnier if he, if he said, oh, there's zombies in this movie. That would have been yeah. Funny. Yeah, that would have been excellent. But hmm, James so. Bond fights zombies? Simon Pegg as James Bond is like I would, sounds like a comic. That's, I'm buying my like ticket a graphic now. novel. It yeah. does. Starring Eddie Redmayne. Oh, who I heard you had an issue with this week. I always have an issue with Eddie Redmayne. He just you don't, he, you don't like Eddie Eddie Redmayne. I I can't I, I I am revulsed when I see Eddie Redmayne I, and in most films because he always has this pouty whiny just oh poor pitiful me look. It's like dude, I just want to punch you in the teeth. I don't, I don't, <laughs> God, I cannot stand him. It's like that is the biggest reason that Fantastic Beasts and Where to, I did not want to find them because I knew he would be there. It's just God, dude, just stop pouting. <laughs> he would have been imperfect for Kylo Ren, and then they could have actually had Adam Driver do something worthwhile <laughs> instead of playing the the angsty little emo villain. Yeah. Eddie Redman would have been awesome. I like in that. Driver as Kylo Ren. I thought he did good. I thought he did well in that role. I, I, Driver is really good, but that the role is just really badly written because all he does is pout. Just, yeah. I, I, but he's such a good powder. Yeah, he's a good powder. It's like, oh my gosh, yeah, well, Eddie Powder Redman's was a completely like, different movie. Just surely there's some actor out there that, regardless of whether they do a good job in the role, like. And I, I acknowledge that he has been really good in some films, but he still pouts and whines too much. There's got to be an actor out there. It's just you see them come on, and it's like, no, nope, I just don't want to even watch this. <laughs> he's, he's it for me. It's like, oh, my gosh, dude. Well, are you wanting to see the third John Wick movie? Uh, if he's in it and gets killed quickly, yes. Yeah, so he, okay. he is the tarp to my Vince ah, Coleman. That's what he is. He just, he just <laughs> kills me. <laughs> Well, they announced that the third John Wick movie is going to be called John Wick 3 Parabellum, which, of course, launched a bajillion questions in the general direction of Keanu Reeves, who's out doing press for a movie I haven't heard of, nor am I going to promote here. Ha ha. Anyway, he says it comes from a, 
a Latin term, sis vis parcium parabellum, which means if you want peace, prepare for war. And they just took the prepare for war part and put it in Latin in the title. And if you put Latin in a title in a movie in America, no one's going to get it. <laughs> We don't speak that in this country. Go back to Latin America. No, no. That's funny. That's not what that means. So it's in and out of theaters. It goes fast. It's like Willie McGee fast. It's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Not quite Vince Coleman, but it'll do. Um, he would be shorter, though. Much in the same size as, say, someone in... He could be in the Child's Play movie. Which, for some reason, keeps having more and more news come out of it. Oh, it's because um, John Gruden's the new coach of the Raiders. It's the same thing. It's a documentary. <laughs> the uh, the Child's Play remake is not going to have Brad Dorff in it, like apparently the original did, but Brad Dorff is going to be in the TV series based on the movie, which they're making both at the same time. And I saw a spectacular quote this week um, about this that... I'm not, and I'll, I'll agree with it. I'm not going to care about Child's Play, the TV series, or the movie remake unless Chucky is voiced by Gilbert Gottfried. Then <laughs> I might be remotely interested, but until then, I'm not. Um, saw something else that Todd, you're going to love this. I will love it. They're talking about making an Alien TV series. Starring Eddie Redmayne. It's going to be a lot like the Watchmen TV series that's coming in that it's set in the universe, but not focus on the xenomorph alien itself. Because I know how much you love that idea in Watchmen. I love, yeah, I love that idea of taking that. Yeah, that didn't make a whole lot of sense. I just picked up um, an anthology of short stories based in, you know, the alien universe, but it's focused on the Marines, which, okay, but you know that going into it in an anthology that's a little different apparently some people are pissed because like the aliens are only in like half of the stories but that's a different They're situation only in half the movies anyway that's yeah. fine that's uh yeah that seems kind of odd it's like yeah we're gonna gravy train the the popularity of this but we're not gonna focus on the main things it's like well the main character of course is ripley because basically if ripley's not in it it's not really worth much no and sometimes even with ripley it's not worth much Sadly. <clears throat> Three? Anyway. Parabellum. Alien. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh... There's a lot of Parabellum ammunition to fight the aliens. So, uh... Let's see. What was the other thing I had for this week? The Predator. There we go. The Predator reshooting uh, several scenes that are going to have ties to the previous movies where apparently there's going to be a character who looks at a screen and there's going to be footage running of the grainy footage of Predators 1 and 2. <laughs> and that's supposed to be their link. And you go, wow, really? <laughs> that's the extent of a link you can bring up. Fine. Mm. Although I did have a very odd thing happen when I was prepping the video for this show. I wanted to have you know, some movie posters of movies that aren't out yet. Because we're doing the news still. We're not to the reviews yet. That's a different show. And so I got movie posters, and I thought, I'll get the Predator one, because it's an upcoming movie. And so I googled Predator Movie Poster 2018. And Google did not do a terribly good job, because here's the movies that came up in this order. Predator, good. Predator, Predator. First three, good. Victor Crowley, who... <laughs> predator, 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 Jurassic World. Huh? Rampage, Submergent, Strangers, Cloverfield Paradox. A different Strangers, Predator, 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 Outsiders. Do you remember the Outsiders? <laughs> what, what? I'm trying to remember. Who was, Charlie Sheen is a gang yeah, member outsiders. back in the 70s? What? Yeah, what? yeah. Patrick Swayze. Well, yeah. Why is that coming up under Predator? Because Charlie Sheen. Anyway. Oh, okay, because, yeah, I, um, I get that now. <laughs> so, Just, there's not a lot of Predators, Predator promotional material out there, is what you're saying. But, well, I'm thinking it's a Google thing, because there was something else I, I Googled for the FWAT show. And it was something to do, something to do with, uh, to, with Donald Trump. 
<laughs> and I needed an image. And as I'm scrolling through all the images, there's a picture of what looks like a 50s pulp detective novel uh, with a red car, a red convertible car in the front of it. And the novel is called The Girl with the Sweet Plump Knees. <laughs> and I thought, that, that's a thing? Really? And what does... I don't even want to know what that has to do with it. <laughs> Tommy Hurts. Tommy, right. That's... that's what I'm... <laughs> anyway, I think that's all we've got for this show, oh, other than God. probably some more cardinal references. But we will be back on Thursday with some reviews of uh, a couple of Ant-Men, because that's what we've got. Come back on Thursday. Hmm. Captain, we're losing power in the warp engines. I think we should be leaving now. I'm going to go home and sleep with my wife. Uh, and on that unusually harmonious bombshell, it is time to end. I am very disappointed. Man, we have a weird job. It's shameful, but uh, eh, it's a living. And like that, he's gone. Dawn, that's the end. <laughs>